Welcome to MrClap.com's quick review of how to write an Enduring Issues essay brought to you by Noble Review Concise Review Books. Here we are in the New York State Global Regents Review Sheet at MrClap.com, a very extensive review sheet giving you all you need to know. As far as the essay is concerned, something that can help you out a lot is knowing all of those enduring issues. When I say all of those, there really is no complete list as you can use really anything that you feel is an enduring issue. It's really about your argument to prove why and how it was enduring. But some of the more common ones involve conflict. And here are all the examples of conflict I can think of throughout Global 2, human rights violations. Um, if you click here to the next one, you'll see that there is no shortage of ideas regarding enduring issues. The essay that we're going to take a look at is here from August 2022, and they will ask you the same question every year. Here it is to identify and explain that enduring issue. We are going to take a quick look at the documents, which they're going to give you a set of five documents, and you, you kind of have to treasure hunt here. It's very exciting trying to find that enduring issue. And I'm going to read through these quickly with you because I know you want a quick video, so... Let's take a look. Document one involves the Industrial Revolution. You could see the spinning jenny. Um, remember, you have to think about outside information. One of the things I tell my students to do is, in the margins here, jot down anything you can think about regarding outside information. The Industrial Revolution. Well, where did it start? It started in England. Why did it start in England? Harbors, natural uh, resources are there. Um, led to urbanization. You know, there isn't much here in the document regarding the Industrial Revolution. You probably know a lot from your class, and all of that would be fair game when discussing the Industrial Revolution. Same here, the Meiji Restoration. You know about the modernization of Japan. You know Japan is going to modernize, modernize become an industrial juggernaut, and eventually attack Pearl Harbor for World War II. Much of that is outside information. Speaking of World War II, here you go. Radios, um, enemy detectors, portable communications, these are all technological innovations. And then we look at some more recent stuff. This is the modernization of India recently. It says 2001. And then over here you have the Middle East and it's talking about Facebook and MySpace. And if you don't know what MySpace is, you can ask your parents. It's like old people Facebook, like really old people, right? That's where one of the earliest innovations. And you can tell here we're talking in the early 2000s. Well, now that we saw the five documents, it, it's not that hard. This one's pretty easy, uh, probably why I picked it. And you're dealing with the spread of technology, modernization. Um, you could talk about how uh, technology has spread across the world regarding this. When we're trying to write the essay, here's the essay that, or I should say the question that they're going to give you. And I underlined some major concerns that I've had reading through student essays over the last few years. I find that everybody knows how to take the documents and add your outside information, but there are several pitfalls. First, the first question here is asking you to identify and explain the enduring issue. So if I just type in, um, you know, an enduring issue has been, let's say modernization has been an enduring issue from let's say circa or around um, 1750 to 2008, whatever's in the documents. That is identifying. That is not explaining. When you're explaining, and you can do this in the introduction, there's no rule really as to where you have to put anything, although the enduring issue really should be in the introduction. You don't want to wait till the end. Um, but the New York State rubric asks you to explain in depth, using both documents and outside information. So when you explain your th your enduring issue, you need to do more of this. You can't just say modernization occurred and that's the enduring issue. Here I wrote up a little paragraph um, which would satisfy this first bullet, um, You know, talking about modernization, improving society, inventions help modernize society. It spreads, uh, it led to the global economy, it, it led to urbanization, it's been going on in the Industrial Revolution, in Japan, and other places. You don't have to be this descriptive, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of some of the things that you can do in your introduction paragraph to explain rather than identify. 
So now we get to the second bullet, arguing. Arguing, if you notice, I underlined it here, okay? I underlined it toward the bottom over here. You see that arguing is a big part of the rubric. Well, how do we argue? Your topic and concluding sentences in your body paragraphs are a great way to argue. You're trying to show that, yes, modernization has been occurring for quite some time. Look, it goes back to the Industrial Revolution. It carries through Japan in the 19th century. We still see it today. And here is, you know, how I'm going to show you this. And you want to use, it says at least three documents. If you want to use all five, that's great. You, you can use all five. If you could only use three, you can only figure out three, that's fine. You know, try to use as much as you can from the documents. But remember, when you identify that, that uh, issue and you explain that issue, and notice here it says identify the enduring issue based upon this and explain, you have to lean on the side of explaining. Explaining is when you use depth. Explaining is when you draw from the things that you know for them in class. If you write a short essay, you're probably not going to get a good grade. I know people have told you for years it's not um, the quantity, it's the quality. But when it comes to this essay, it really is both because you can't show the depth of your knowledge without writing a lot more. Sure, you could answer this question in you know a, a few short paragraphs, but to what end? It's not going to show the depth. So, so to show the depth, what you need to do is when you use your documents in a, in a great way, your essay should look. You know, if you're writing in your body paragraphs here and your teacher probably has told you, you know, you're citing Doc 1 and that was the one on the Industrial Revolution. Well, after you cite your document and show how this has been enduring, you know, you, then you show your modernization, you know, this shows modernization as and then you're going to type your little sentence there. But after that, like I said before, can't you say the Industrial Revolution began in England, right? Can't you say some of the inventions that have occurred, like the steam engine, okay? You, you learned about the spinning jenny, which was in the documents over there, factory system uh, that emerges in England, urbanization that emerges in England. You know, there's a lot of stuff that occurred. Capitalism in the Industrial Revolution, how it spread to the rest of Europe. All of that stuff, there's your OI. And, and one of the things you want to do is anytime you're using a document, use as much OI as you can. And the the Rubric here says include relevant information. Now, those of you who are AP students, you know that usually it's just one piece of context and one piece of outside information. For this, Regents, there it doesn't have really a, a limit on here or um, a minimum. I, I suggest that you go through each document as you as you roll around here through your essay, and then you go into document two and you talk about the um, Meiji Restoration. You cite it document two, and then again, you're going to go with that exact same thing here. You're going to tell me about, like I said, Japan, they modernize. Eventually, you could talk about how Japan uh, improved their railroads, their factories, and you could even go into the idea of how they became imperialists, right? Know how they went into China, and they fought, fought the Russo-Japanese War, and eventually attacked Pearl Harbor. All of that is outside information. So what you're doing is, for all the documents you use, Doc 1, OI, Doc 2, OI, Doc 3, OI, and so on and so forth. And at that point, you're going to be on to possibly a third page. Your writing is critical. The depth of it is critical. And what we talked about here, you know, in three hours, can you do this? Well, oftentimes, this is where the essay stops for a lot of students. And if you look at the state and how they look at um, papers and they give all the teachers anchor papers, papers that they show what's a five, what's a four, this part here is often overlooked and it's not that hard. I recommend to my students to make all of this its own paragraph before the conclusion, okay? So there's your conclusion down there. You all know how to write a conclusion. 
the paragraph before the conclusion. Show specifically to the rubric. Identify how this has, or said argue, how the issue has affected people. So you would say modernization has affected people because, and then you show it. You might want to show it's positive, right? Could it be positive that you have um, capitalism, jobs, um, spread of technology? Sure. Can it be um, negative as well? You have environmental concerns. You also have a gap between rich and the poor. Right? We can we can say that. So although which is why you're gonna have the rise of socialism. So you can argue positive, negative, but look, how has it affected people? Okay, how has it affected people? And this one here, has it continued or changed over time? Well, you could say both. You could say it has continued. We're seeing technology in different centuries, which is kind of what you're arguing for your enduring issue, okay? Okay, it's continued over the centuries in different countries. You can say that. Maybe there's change. Maybe what started at first as economic, simple things that are made in factories, today, isn't modernization a different thing? Aren't we talking more about tech and internet and the computer age? So perhaps... That is a change, and although it continues to um, affect different nations, and also it continues, we could say, cultural diffusion, right? It continues to spread. There is change in what we're seeing here. So a couple of adjustments to many of you who are writing this essay that, that we should conclude on. Number one, don't forget to explain, as I do here, you know, what is that issue? Why is that an enduring issue? How has that been continuing over time? And then certainly... This part you're all probably familiar with. Use the documents, use your outside information. Use your document, use your outside information. If you cite like this, the person who's grading this essay will be thrilled. They'll be like, wow, look how this person has organized their, ish their essay around these enduring issue themes, showing us the documents and the outside information. And then, wow, look over here. They have taken their time to write a paragraph to satisfy how it affects people and how the issue has continued or has changed over time, or perhaps it has done both. So there's a lot of uh, tips that I'll give you on mrclaff.com. Remember, this is your review sheet over here for the regions, the global regions, everything that you would need, geography, all these links are live, and here's all the people that you know, and the best bit of advice I can give to you is study gradually, don't cram, in the last minute. But if you do cram in the last minute, there is a video up here somewhere that is the entire course in about 16 minutes. Um, it is a YouTube video, um, which I can't find right now. And the last bit of inf information is, they're not gonna ask you specifically what happened in the year 1789, but you're gonna need to know chronology. You should really study your timeline. And that's all I have. For more review, you can get free flashcards and review sheets right here at mrclaff.com. Uh, you can check out Noble Review, uh, the review videos on YouTube. Best of luck, everybody.